Hey, it's Meiko. Welcome back to my channel. It's so nice to see you here. Sometimes whenever I haven't picked up a brush to paint anything for a while, whenever I go back to painting, I feel rusty and as if I completely forgot how to paint. And when I realized what really helps me to go back to painting is just simply to warm up a little bit before I create my actual painting. A great way to warm up is by creating simple patterns using your brush. This way you can practice the brush movements and also get familiar with different techniques and color combinations and all the good stuff while creating a beautiful painting. Let's start by picking a few colors first. To keep it simple and to avoid muddy colors, pick your favorite colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, also known as the analogous colors. They look really beautiful together and you can use the wet and wet technique to make them melt into each other beautifully. And then pick one color that is directly on the opposite side to create some contrast. I think just by picking colors that you love for your paintings can help you find your own color palette and your own personal style later. If you want to learn more about color harmony and what colors you should pick, I actually create a color harmony cheat sheet where I also show you some helpful tools you can use to pick the perfect colors for your art. You can find a link in the description box down below. Now to warm up, let's practice a few brush strokes. To create the lines, you want to hold your brush almost facing straight to the ceiling and you want to rest your hand on your pinky finger. This way you make sure you have stability when you move your brush. Now, when you move your brush, you want to move your whole arm and gently glide your hand on your pinky finger, barely touching the paper to create thin lines. You want to hold your brush around the metal part. If you hold it too close to the bristles or too far away from the metal part, you'll have a much harder time to control your brush when you move it. You can practice this movement on a piece of watercolor paper that you use for practicing so you don't feel like wasting high quality paper for this exercise. Now to create thicker lines, you need to do the same, but this time you want to push the brush against the paper a little bit more so you use the belly of the brush to create thick lines. The more pressure you apply to your brush, the thicker the brush stroke will be. You can also place the bristles vertically and press the brush down so you create even thicker lines. From here, you can play around with different brush strokes. I think sometimes you overthink how complicated a painting has to look to be considered art or a masterpiece, but sometimes all we need is one brush, a few beautiful colors that look good together, and a few random brush strokes and you have a painting. If you use a good quality brush, you can also play around with different brush strokes in one go, meaning you can switch between thin and thick lines gradually. First, you want to only apply light and then gradually add more pressure to the brush to create thicker lines. And then you want to gradually lift the brush to create a thin line again. And from here, you can switch between thick and thin lines back and forth to create this wavy line. This is especially helpful when you want to paint leaves because you want the brush to have the ability to switch from thin to thick lines without a problem. Another important brush movement you want to master is creating curves because this way you can move on to painting round shapes, leaves and petals. Here you also want to apply light and then full pressure to your brush while painting a C shape. Do this with different directions to train your hand movements so you can get familiar with that. And to create a leaf shape, you simply combine both brush strokes together. Here you also start with light pressure and the sharp tip of the brush, then you push down the brush to create a thick brush stroke, and then you lift off the brush to create the transition to a sharp edge. As you can see, with only one brush, I was able to create super thin and thick lines and any other shape I wanted. So if you're just starting out, you don't have to buy 20 different brushes that you either not use half of the time or they fall apart. Start or upgrade your journey with a good brush and it will make your life so much easier. Now, since we warmed up a little, let's paint a few more simple paintings to practice and warm up a little bit more. In the beginning, we focus on very controlled brush strokes to create different types of lines that are great for when you want to add detail to your painting. 
And for the second part of the warm-up, I wanted to focus on color combinations, blending and loose brush strokes as this is something you'll need when you want to create different types of washes for your backgrounds, for example. So with these two warm-up sessions, you'll be ready to go ahead and create a painting. Here I divide my paper into smaller sections using thin washi tape to play around with different color combinations. You can always do that for your paintings as well. When you're not sure what exact colors you should use or how you want to create your painting, you can use this trick to create small thumbnails to plan out your painting. So you can try out different color combinations, different types of composition, or just different ideas in general, and then you can decide on what you like the best before you create your bigger painting. This really helps to make you feel less overwhelmed because you only have to fill a small area and you can try out multiple ideas on one single sheet of paper without feeling afraid of wasting your art supplies. One of the common struggles I hear is that whenever some of you try to paint a sky or a galaxy, it rather turns into mud. This is because sometimes you might place colors next to each other that do create a rather muddy mixture. And having a small overview of different color combinations and their mixed results can be a great reference for your future paintings. So here I just wanted to play around. I place different oranges and reds next to each other or different blues and purples. Sometimes the result looked really vibrant, sometimes it looked a little bit more dull, but I really like all the results because it gives me a variety for different color combinations and mixtures to choose from. And as you can see, I only used a few different colors. I focused on the analogous color scheme and added a few additional accents with the complementary color. In this case, this was my color scheme, but of course you can pick any color of your choice. If you need inspiration on what colors go well together, don't forget to download my color harmony cheat sheet with the link in the description box down below. And this was the final result. I really love the different colors and I can totally see myself using these color mixtures for future skies or galaxy paintings. Now in my next video I'll show you more easy painting ideas that you can try out after your warm up. So make sure you're subscribed and have your notification bell on so you don't miss any of my future videos. I really hope this video was helpful, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!